The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents Non-Denominational. Are you sure? So, I'm a former Southern Baptist. I walked down the aisle at the age of four or five and accepted Jesus into my heart at the uh, Gashland Baptist Church in Kansas City, Missouri, and eventually I went on to attend a bunch of other churches. We moved, and I was at Harvester Baptist Church in uh, St. Charles, Missouri for a while. And while I've mentioned that I've gone to other churches, Pentecostal churches, for concerts, and we worked with other churches for mission trips and things like that, uh, my family, my extended family, while my my inner family was Southern Baptist, my extended family included Catholics, uh, Pentecostals, Lutheran, Methodist, and some non-denominational believers. And as it turns out, my family also includes some closeted atheists, uh, though I, I'm an out atheist, so everybody knows it, which means uh, the ones that have been closeted sometimes for many, many decades, uh, some of them have confided in me that they don't actually believe this stuff either. So I'm, you know, keeping their secret, but that's a different video. Lately, I've noticed that when I try to go through the doctrines of various churches, you can easily get confused. Uh, oh, I was a Southern Baptist. How's that different from Anabaptist? Okay, Uh, how's that different from Bible Baptist or Free Will Baptist? And how's that different from Pentecostals, Lutherans, it's Methodists, and how's all that different from Catholics? Uh, There are other channels that will go through denominations in great detail. There's some great sites that will chart it out and allow you to go through and compare some of them to show the nuts and bolts of what's different and what's slightly different. And they still barely catch, scratch the surface. it, it's funny that Christianity has, depending on how you divide it up, thousands, possibly, but well over a thousand at least, uh, identifiable named denominations. Now, for the purpose of this video, I saw and continue to see a lot of apparently non-denominational churches, and I think it's worth understanding why. Part of it is because the word denomination is almost as flexible as the creationist usage of the word kind. Instead of dealing with the more scientific specifics of species, creationists will cite kinds. And that allows them a sort of vague clumping together. Uh, There are plenty of disputes. I'm going to go with the, you know, kind of Wikipedia uh, list of Christian denominations. And I'll, I'll show that in a little bit. But this notion that denomination is easy to identify is simply wrong. It could, could mean at least one of two different uh, ideas, which one is this, just a, uh, a labeled group with some sort of shared beliefs, or it could mean a labeled group governed by an authority. For example, the Southern Baptist Convention, if you're a member if you're, a, if you're in a Southern Baptist church that is a member of the Southern Baptist Convention, that Southern Baptist Convention is a joint collection of governing churches that decide what Southern Baptists are going to advocate for, the profession of faith, their credos, their doctrines, and all that stuff. Non-denominational is, once upon a time, it was a tiny little thing. It was, oh, we're not like those others. But they still kind of are. I mean, at the end of the day, you're still looking, talking about some version of Christianity. Now, Catholics don't view themselves as a do- denomination, and many of them don't view themselves as a uh, Christian denomination or whatever, especially. They think they are the original church, sort of the original tribute band that was sanctioned by the founder and everybody else is a, is a bad copy of their tribute band. Um, but while they view themselves as pre-denominational, Generally speaking, when we're, when we're dividing up religions, uh, when it comes to Christianity, Catholicism and its sub-branches are one of many denominations. And Protestantism is another group of denominations. It's not like Protestant is necessarily a denomination itself. It's like a meta-category or a, 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 a top-level category for all of the... Uh, the subcategories of Christianity that are within it, which we'll see in a bit. Um, but yeah, the, the you can take it up with Wikipedia if you, and, and try to fine-tune. You can get into the arguments about what denominations are. But at the end of the day, 
Basically, it is a, a, a labeled group with a collection of similar beliefs. Now, for this video, I did a quick search for churches in Austin, and um, first thing that caught my eye is that there were some promoted, which means paid, uh, results. And in those churches, the top church results were for Shine Church, uh, St. Mary's Catholic Church, Christian Life Church, and the Well Austin Community Church. Those are the, the top four that I got as promoted uh, churches. I'm not going to go through all of them. I picked Shine Church just because it was the top of this promoted list. And we're not going to go through detail of what Shine Church really says. But their tagline, both there in the promotion and on their website, is we are an unconventional church for an unconventional time. And they portray themselves as non-denominational. But if you dig around on their website, you'll find that they are associated with Planet Shakers Church. Now, Planet Shakers is an organization associated with the Australian Christian churches, which are Assembly of God, AOG churches, which are Evangelical Pentecostals. So is your non-denominational Shine Church, and I've never been there, don't know anybody there that I know of, this is not in any way targeting them. They were just the first result. But is Shine Church non-denominational or is it Pentecostal? Is it Evangelical Pentecostal? Is it Assembly of God? Is it AOG? Is it Austin Christian Churches? Is it Planet Shakers? All of these are either equivalent or tiered. In the issue here is that they may want to say, we're not governed by anybody. We're not governed by Planet Shakers. We're associated with Planet Shakers. We're not governed by AOG or Evangelical Pentecostals. We're associated with them. And instead, they want to shine church. It's, it's kind of a marketing thing. There were nine churches in a vlog post that I found that were listed as, here's some of the best churches in Austin. And it was interesting because there was High Point Baptist, hey, it includes Baptist in the name. You know that it's some sort of Baptist church. You don't necessarily know what kind of Baptist church it is, but at least they're telling you. And I think that these churches that include the denomination in the name are probably, they probably tend to be older, but I haven't gone through and looked through that yet. So after High Point Baptist Church, there was uh, Cristo Rey Catholic Church. Then there's uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church, St. Mary's Catholic Church, and then the rest of the nine, so that's half of the nine included a uh, denomination in their name. The other ones are New Life Austin, Gateway, Austin Oaks, Austin Stone, and Hill Country Bible Church. And Bible Church may or may not count as a denomination. It gets used both ways as to whether there's a, a collection of Bible churches and whether there's an organization. Uh, Austin Stone Church is actually a Southern Baptist Convention church. They just don't say... Austin Stone Baptist SBC. If you go to their website, they did, it's not like hidden or anything, but it is not the primary thing. It's Austin Stone, and then it's part of the Southern Baptist Convention. Austin Oaks is listed as Swedish Evangelical on their website, but that's not listed in the marketing anywhere. New Life Austin is United Pentecostal, uh, and yet many of them would either blatantly identify as non-denominational or try to give that impression when drawing people in. And that's kind of the key here, is if you dig in beyond the name, some of them are part of a governing body like South ba uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Others are part of labeled denominations or church families. Um, but once upon a time, we had the Nicene Creed around 325 or so. And the interesting thing for me is that this is, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things. It's a statement of beliefs. And specifically, it's a, you know, when you get to the end, it's, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, all this stuff. But it talks about, you know, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit and the church. Um, it's, it's the creed. Now, this evidently isn't good enough or isn't accurate enough for everybody who identifies as Christian. I want to, I'm going to do something. This is going to be a little difficult because uh, I'm going to try to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. This is the Wikipedia page 
that lists Christian denominations. I'm going to uh, scroll through this. We're starting here after the First Council of Nicaea in 325. Then there's Gnosticism and late and medieval Christianity. We get past this little bit of article, but then there's canonical Oriental Orthodox. Then here's where the Eastern Orthodox list begins. Then there's independent Eastern Orthodox in each of these. There's true Orthodoxy, other Orthodox movements. Then you get into the Catholic Church and the various versions of the Catholic Church, the independent Catholic Church, the Catholic movements that took place, and then you get into Protestantism. And there's a separate list of Protestant denominations if you want to go there, but there's the Proto-Protestants, then there's Lutheran, all of those versions of Lutheran, then Radical Pietist, Reformed, uh, this Continental Reformed Church, There's all sorts of versions of that. Then you get into the Presbyterians. Those are all Presbyterians. Congressionalism, Anglican, Anglican Communion, United and Uniting Churches. Other Anglican churches, by the way, we're not even at the halfway point because now we're at the Anabaptists, which includes Amish, Hutterites, Mennonites, River Brethren, Brethren Churches, all kinds of stuff. Then there's the Baptists. Then there's the Alliance of Baptists, Liberty Baptists, all of these things here. The Southern Baptist Convention, various Baptist movements. Then there's the Methodists, the African Methodist Church, all these listed here. Then more Brethren, more Evening Light, uh, Keswickian, Quaker, Shaker, Plymouth Brethren, Pentecostal and Charismatic. Here's all of the various apostolic Pentecostal churches, Assembly of God, Charismatics, Neo-Charismatics, United and United. Uh, This could be a 20-minute video of just scrolling through this. Then there's Adventism, all these. I'm going to keep going, Eastern Protestantism, because I'm not getting anywhere really quickly. Then under here is the Miscellaneous. This is where you get to esoteric Christianity, all these uh, Judeo-Christians, Latter-day Saints movements. Do you include the Mormons or not? Uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, most Christians I know would consider it uh, heresy, but that's what every Christian group tends to consider every other one when you get down to push comes to shove. Then there's the parachurch and a bunch of different ideologies. There's, uh, wow, it just keeps going and going and going and going. The point of this list is that you could make a list of Christian denominations and then you would have to change and update it regularly, which is one of the reasons why the Wikipedia article is there, so that this can actually be done. So why would a church identify as non-denominational? Even if they're clearly, if you go read their statement of faith, as a matter of fact, if you find a non-denominational church, go to their website, and if they don't list a denomination anywhere, go to their statement of faith and cut and paste phrases from that statement of faith into a Google search, and you will find that some of them are copy-pasted from others. Uh, Some of them are actually uh, identical to uh, an organization or a collection of churches that they kind of want to associate with, but not necessarily uh, publicly and clearly associate with. And so after going through all those doctrines, it would make you wonder, hang on, you want to start a Christian church. None of these labeled doctrine passages are good enough for you. There's, there's, out of all those that I just scrolled through, there's none that you match up with. And in part, I think the reality is uh, there's a number of reasons why churches are identifying as non-denominational, even when they're clearly a part of some group. Church attendance is down. Churches are failing. Dominations are caving or denominations are caving. The top-down structure tends to foment corruption and scandal. And if an independent church fails, that doesn't really hurt the denomination, but if it turns out they're part of a denomination uh, and it's just kind of on the down low, then it can end up benefiting it or benefiting the church. All those denominations, and those churches couldn't find a single label, so they had to make a new one. Or is it just the case that there's so many different denominations of Christianity that people don't, can't bother to learn them all, can't bother to understand them all. And so some of them are creating identical groups with different names with similar or, or identical packages of belief. After all, does the First Baptist Church and the Second Baptist Church and the Third Baptist Church, do they have disagreements on doctrine? Sure. But so does the guy in the front pew at the First Baptist Church and the guy in the second pew in the First Baptist Church and everybody sitting in that pew. Because the beliefs of the individual are separate from the beliefs of that church or the statements of faith by that church is what they're going to be advocating for. This is not a huge deal because you could, let's say, associate with a particular political party but not agree to everything in their platform. 
You could say, I'm going to be a libertarian, but man, that stuff they put in their platform about um, cannibalism, that's not for me. Uh, you could say, ooh, I'm uh, uh, associated with Democrats, but I don't agree with this particular position that is part of the current party platform. And you can work within it to change it, or you can split off and do something else. This sort of divisioning is exactly what's happened in Christian churches. Why? Why is it that we can have a general belief that there's one God unchanging with one message unchanging, and yet we need over a thousand different labeled groups spread around the world that disagree on some point of doctrine? I think a good chunk of the answer is that it's marketing. With Catholic Church scandals, Baptist Church scandals, with the various uh, just terrible things those organizations have done, sometimes you want to keep the doctrine but not be associated with a governing body. And in other cases, you want to seem like you are different and unique for marketing purposes, even if you're identical to the church down the street. Even if the pastor at uh, High Point and the pastor at Austin Stone went to the same seminary together and had virtually no disagreements, um, they could still be part of two different churches that identify as non-denominational and pretty much the same. It makes you wonder. If the Bible says God is not the author of confusion, and it's the Bible alone that has led to over a thousand denominations within Christianity, then maybe God isn't the author of the Bible. Maybe God isn't the author of the Nicene Creed. Maybe God isn't the author of any of the doctrines or credos and manifestos put out by any of these organizations. Maybe it's men all the way down. Maybe instead of changing labels to be hip and cool, we're the hip church now. We're not like your stodgy old Lutheran church that your grandparents went to, even though we believe all the same stuff. We need to draw in the younger crowd. Maybe if they focused on ministry over marketing, there wouldn't be this many denominations. Maybe if there was a God with a clear message who actually cared what denomination someone was or wasn't a part of, maybe God would clear all this up. But I'm not going to hold my breath. See you next time. Bye-bye.